we are watching a microscopic living cell. This one is about a thousandth of an inch in diameter. The action of this scene, like some others in this film, is speeded up through time-lapse photography. Despite its minute size, the cell is the basic unit of life. It is through the physical and chemical activities of cells that the life of any individual organism is maintained. What are some of the structures and properties of cells that enable them to carry on the functions of life? What we today call the cellular theory of life is derived from a single crucial observation. All cells divide to produce new cells. All cells are derived from pre-existing cells. This important discovery, which was to affect the study of life for all time, was made in the late 19th century by a group of scientists who called themselves cell biologists. One of these was Rudolf Virchow, the first to study thoroughly the process of cell division, or mitosis. But his work was based on the pioneer studies of two earlier scientists, Matthias Jakob Schleiden, a botanist, and Theodor Schwann, a zoologist. They were the original proponents of the cellular theory of life. Studies of the cell made with early microscopes indicated only three main structures, an outer rim, the cell membrane, a large area, the cytoplasm, and a central area, the nucleus. This drawing of a cell, based on what the electron microscope reveals, shows many complex structures. The electron microscope affords cell biologists with a degree of magnification capable of revealing the minute structures or organelles within the cells. The electron microscope and improved light microscopes have greatly added to our knowledge of the cell. Today, that knowledge is far advanced over what was known just a half century ago. Yet, these flat drawings cannot indicate the three-dimensionality of a cell as this model does. But even a model cannot indicate the unique characteristic of cells. They are alive. The material moving within the cell is traditionally called protoplasm. Once thought to be a living substance, protoplasm may be defined as a unique mixture of chemical substances, which is the basis of life. Protoplasm is not a single chemical substance of given proportions. It undergoes constant change during the chemical activities we call the life functions. These changes are studied and analyzed in the laboratory by cytologists and biochemists investigating the chemistry of cellular life functions. Chemical analysis has shown that protoplasm is a colloid, a substance made up of tiny solid particles suspended in a fluid. Egg white and gelatin are common colloids. Water is the fluid of protoplasm. Using this plastic bag to represent a cell, we fill it more than three quarters full to approximate the percentage of water in protoplasm. Within the water of protoplasm, several groups of chemical compounds are dispersed as a colloidal suspension. Generally speaking, there are molecules of six types of compounds dispersed in protoplasm. Proteins, the first of these, make up much of the solid material of protoplasm. Protein molecules are very large, and only a part of one is shown in this diagram. Protein molecules are made up of nitrogen atoms, carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and oxygen atoms. Large molecules are also typical of the second group of compounds dispersed in protoplasm. These are the fats, or lipids. Lipid, or fat molecules, are made up of hydrogen and carbon atoms, combined with a small number of oxygen atoms. The third group of compounds dispersed in the water of protoplasm is carbohydrates. Carbohydrate molecules are also made up of hydrogen and carbon atoms, combined with a large number of oxygen atoms. 
The fourth group of compounds in protoplasm is the nucleic acids. The nucleic acids are among the largest molecules found in protoplasm and, as this model indicates, are made up of hundreds of atoms. In addition, molecules of vitamins and minerals are dispersed in protoplasm. So protoplasm consists of molecules of water, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, vitamins, and minerals. Varying amounts of these compounds are organized in the cell to form specialized structures. Each of these structures carries out a particular life function and their interaction maintains life in the cell. We'll represent some of these structures in our model. The most obvious one is the cell wall. Generally speaking, only the cells of plants possess a cell wall. Under the microscope, the cell walls of this onion show up as dark lines. The cell wall, composed of various carbohydrates and lipids, provides a protective case for the rest of the plant cell and gives the cell its fixed shape. Now we remove the cell wall which encloses the cytoplasm, the second major division of the cell. The outermost structure of the cytoplasm is the plasma membrane, which is extremely thin. Actually, it is so thin that in most cells it can be seen only with the electron microscope. The arrows point to the plasma membrane of a grasshopper sex cell. Composed mainly of lipids and proteins, this semi-permeable plasma membrane allows food substances to enter the cell and waste products to leave. Other membranes in the cell are those which enclose vacuoles, small fluid-filled cavities within the cytoplasm. The membranes around vacuoles regulate the flow of cytoplasmic materials into and out of the vacuoles. In this single-cell animal, amoeba, several types of vacuoles are seen as light circular areas. In this view, three food vacuoles are apparent. Live prey are held in this type of vacuole, where they are digested into soluble food substances. The two vacuoles seen contracting on the right side of this paramecium are contractile vacuoles, which regulate the water content of the cell. Another organ within the cytoplasm is the endoplasmic reticulum, a network of narrow channels that runs throughout the cytoplasm. Under the electron microscope, the endoplasmic reticulum looks like dark threads. This organ is thought to function somewhat like a circulatory system within the cytoplasm. Also present in the cytoplasm are a number of smaller bodies, the mitochondria. Mitochondria under the microscope appear as rod-shaped grainy structures. The mitochondria contain a special group of proteins called enzymes. It is in the mitochondria of most cells that food is oxidized. Oxidation of food releases much of the energy needed for life functions. Still another kind of structure, chloroplasts are found within the cytoplasm of green plant cells. Here, the electron microscope has magnified a single chloroplast, the large dark area, over 40,000 times. In this leaf section, we see the microscopic chloroplasts moving within the cells. It is within the chloroplasts that the chemical process called photosynthesis is accomplished. In photosynthesis, food is manufactured using the energy of sunlight. Within the cytoplasm of cells, then, are the specialized structures that perform the life processes, the plasma membrane through which food is obtained, the chloroplasts, which in plant cells manufacture food, the mitochondria in which production of energy takes place, the endoplasmic reticulum through which materials are circulated within the cell, and the organelles which store needed food material and eliminate wastes, 
the vacuoles. The third major division of the cell, the nucleus, controls the formation of these structures and is also the center of the life process of reproduction. The nucleus, too, is enclosed within a membrane. Under the microscope, this membrane, the nuclear membrane, shows up as a thin, dark band in the center of the picture. Through the membrane, certain materials enter and leave the nucleus. When the nucleus is properly stained, the dye brings out long, thread-like structures, the chromosomes. These are formed of proteins combined with a complex chemical compound called deoxyribonucleic acid, or for short, DNA. Using our model of the nucleus, we can approximate the position of the chromosomes within it. The DNA in chromosomes contains the hereditary blueprints for the structures in the cytoplasm. When a cell reproduces by division, the chromosomes are doubled. One complete set goes to each daughter or new cell, so that each receives the same hereditary material as the parent cell. That hereditary information is contained in DNA. DNA in the nuclei fluoresces as bright areas in these specially stained cells. The hereditary information in DNA is transmitted into the cytoplasm by RNA, a second nucleic acid, indicated by the darker fluorescence. In the cytoplasm, RNA helps form new cell structures. RNA also makes up much of the material of the nucleoli, small, dense bodies within the nucleus. With the nucleoli, we end our survey of some of the intricate structures and their properties within the nucleus and the cytoplasm of the cell. Considered as a whole, these structures enable the cell, the basic unit of life, to perform all life functions, whether as a simple organism or as a part of a complex, many-celled plant or animal. But we must remember that these life functions are not merely mechanical. They are the result of delicate chemical actions and reactions taking place within the specialized structures of the living cell. It is in this area, the chemistry of life, that many of the exciting investigations into the science of cell biology are being made today. <laughs>